Hi everyone, welcome to the Woolly Mama Fibre Company podcast episode, I'm not sure, thanks for joining me. I've got a bit of a cold so I sound a bit nasal but I'm feeling okay so um, my phone hasn't got much battery so I'm, go I'm going to rattle through everything pretty quickly here. Um, but I do have some things that you will have not seen which is exciting. I've got some yarn for the shop update. I've got some beautiful bags coming to the shop and I've got obviously finished objects and I've got a few things in the pipeline um, for projects that I want to cast on. So let's start with my Ian sweater. I don't think this was finished in the last podcast episode. Um, this is a pattern by uh, December Knits. It's spelled E-U-N. Uh, to knit this, I held my Causeway yarn and my natural sock yarn together to make like an iron weight gauge, which is, I was getting around 17 stitch stitches per 10 centimetres. Has this really nice split detail, which I, I've admired this pattern for a long time, so um, I was really glad that I could make it. And um, the colourways are basically olive. One was a more, the natural sock was a more olivey olive and the causeway was a more muted like olive. It is top down and what else could I tell you about it? Probably a lot of my phone wasn't going to run out of battery. I thought about doing more like tapered sleeves but actually I think they turned out really nice. I really like the length although it's not super practical for me in my season of life at the moment. So what I tend to do is just do this. And I do think that still looks pretty good. And it gives you a bit more wiggle room if you're, you know, changing a nappy or dyeing yarn or, well, I don't wear this dyeing yarn, but yeah, you know what I mean? Washing dishes, whatever. <coughs> it was definitely a beginner friendly pattern. It wasn't uh, very difficult. At the start, I was worried about the German short rows. I don't know if you can see. You can see them a little bit still, but they blocked out really well. So you honestly can't really notice it. So that's totally fine. And it's been a while since I've done a raglan, but I love this raglan detail. It's so nice. And honestly, it was just like really fun to knit. So I'll try and show you how, how it looks. Um, I did a tubular bind off here. But I think I should have went down a needle slice because it's slightly flaring. My bind off must be looser than my ribbing. I tried to block it out, but I may actually go back and unpick that, particularly at the front. I think it's worse. I did find the end one day. Oh yeah, there it is. So I might go back and unpick that and do it again. But yeah, I'm really enjoying the the lovely flash of colour that this brings to my wardrobe because before this I had knitted a project my, the, my favourite things knitwear sweater number 18 in the same yarn combination but different colour and I wore that so much um, after I first knitted it so it's nice to have like a total drastic <laughs> change in colour and um, yeah my hat, I should say, is the Stock and Pit Beret by Albina. And I knitted this in my Swarbles and Blue Textile yarn. It's limited edition, currently in the shop, in my shop, and it's also now in the Woolly Thistle. I held it double to make this, and I think it's a look. This hat, honestly, I, before I started, uh, before I knit this beret, I had never worn a beret in my life. And I felt really awkward the first few times I put it on. I don't know, it just felt really weird. But now it's like the hat that I like put on the most. Um, it's like, I think it's stylish. And it doesn't give you that weird like hat, like, I don't know. You know when you put a hat on that like squashes your hair and makes it funny? You don't get that with a beret. And um, I think the texture of like this yarn held together because it's woolen spun. To me, that's like such a nice colour and texture that you get from it. So yeah, when I held this warbles and blue textile together for this project, I was getting like an iron weight gauge. And the details on this pattern are very beautiful. 
so and it's not just like it's like a peaty color it's like not just it's not just black <laughs> do you know what i mean i pop in some pictures of the sheep it came from one flock actually uh, and it was spun in wheels woolen spun but it's yeah it's kind of browny kind of charcoal and little bits of lighter bits as well so that's today's outfit next finished object so my next finished object is one I started in December. It was my December bow, <laughs> um, which I was like, definitely not getting finished for Christmas time. What to wear in my hair. Um, it wasn't, it didn't take long at all, but my problem was I had the bow finished, but I had, I had no way of attaching it to my hair. So Petite Knit designed this, I think originally to go to Christmas tree, but then she did this reel with it in her hair. And I was like, I love that. And look how nice the naturally dyed colours go together. This is the Hearth DK and it's dyed with indigo. And how nice does that go together? Like, yeah, so nice, all the naturally dyed colours and the natural colour of the fibre. So this pattern was super easy. Um, it flew past and I would 100% knit another one. Now, I know some of you are going to be interested in how I attach this to my hair or how I wear this, but basically Petite Knit has like a little reel on her Instagram that I just copied about how do you attach a barrette. Ta-da! So I had to order these online. That's how it looks there and how I attached it. I think she only attached it here and here, but I also attached it here. I have a lot of hair, so I went for the 10 centimeter barrette, which is perfect. It holds up about half of my hair and it looks really cute. It's just a really easy way to put your hair up, to look as if you've styled it in some nice way. And I did originally have it here today, but I thought it looked a bit ridiculous because I think my gauge was probably a little bit too large. I would definitely go back in and knit these in different sizes and colors. Because if you had a small one, you could put it on, you know, like the end of your plait. Because I got a different size of barrette as well. I thought I could make some as gifts. Or you could put it on the side if it was a bit smaller. That type of thing. And, you know, in a world where I had lots of time, like spare time to knit other people things. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I would knit these for the tops of presents and then they could be recycled as Christmas decorations. And yeah, so really pleased with how this turns out. And it's super easy. I just got these on Amazon. You could probably get them in other places, but um, they had a, a good selection there. Unfortunately, I had to buy a bag of 20 I think <laughs> so now I've got quite a lot <laughs> I'm gonna make a lot of these <laughs> so yeah super pleased with how that turned out I don't know if I've shared these on here but basically I've been <laughs> I've been wearing them like every day since I finished them so um I had to kind of I shouldn't really tell you this but I had to pick them out of the washing pile to show them to you but they don't look too bad really um they're not too dirty or anything this is my um, my 3 by one rib socks in the Candlelit Banquet colourway. And you can see I ran out of yarn here. Um, so this is in my natural sock yarn um, and I held it double for this these socks. Um, but I had previously used part of the skein in another project and I didn't bother weighing it. So basically what I did was um, I have a magic knot ball of my natural socks. So I just took a strand from the outside and a strand from the inside and knitted the toe. So I've been wearing these for about a month. You can see they've felt it a little bit around the heel, which is good. I would always recommend knitting your natural socks about a centimetre, at least a centimetre longer if you tend to felt socks. Like if they felt at the heel or the toe, I I would always recommend it them a bit longer so that they're the perfect size after they felt, which makes the fabric stronger and your socks will last really well. I have never had any problems actually. The only time I had a problem was when I knitted a pair too short and my toe poked through the end. But um 
that was a while ago now and I know better. So yeah, you have to give yourself enough length in the foot. I just did a heel flap and gusset, nothing very exciting, just my usual sock recipe. And everyone I showed this to to has went, ah, oh, that's really cute. Because at the start I was like, oh, maybe I should rip it out and like do a toe on both of them. And then I was just like, you know what? I don't think I care enough. I couldn't be bothered. Yeah. So I've been wearing these like, normally I'd wash them maybe like once a week or something like that. But I haven't felt that these have been smelly or anything. So I didn't. I didn't bother, I've just aired them out, you know, like over the radiator every night and honestly, like they've been great. So after a month, I think they need a wash. I think they need a wash. <laughs> yeah, you probably think I just wear the same clothes all the time. That's because I do. <laughs> um, so next. <clears throat> is that all my finished objects? Yes, I think so. So then after I completed those two kind of smaller projects, I decided to swatch for my next projects. And I'm on a kind of a mission to add more of my yarns to my sweater collection because like, weirdly enough, I don't have that many. And also I really enjoy knitting with my yarn and wear my yarn, so why would I not use it? and make more sweaters out of it. So I was clearing out the dye studio a little bit and I found some BFL, some skeins of BFL Gotland that I had dyed a while ago and some skeins of Hearth DK that I dyed a while ago. And isn't this so nice? Look at all these lovely colors. So I decided to um, hold them together. And by the way, you probably think, um. Well, I'll maybe skip to this bit to the end, but I'm knitting a lot of like similar looking sweaters, but that's just because I wear these loads and I find them very wearable. So yeah, I would kind of like lots of colorful sweaters and different colors and cardigans, but like not too like fancy looking so that I can wear them with like, like, you know, fancier fabric or textured fabric. So yeah, this is a strand of my BFL Gotland 4 ply and my Heart of Decay together. And this um, little marled swatch is the result. So this was the swatch for my heli sweater and it is a pattern by Tanya. I gotta put it down here because I'll forget. It's not a designer that I was familiar with, but I had seen it on Ravelry, I think quite a while ago. And I just thought, mm, I like that. And I kind of read a little bit and I thought I knew how it was constructed. Um, and it's constructed in a very similar way to the My Favourite Things Knitwear sweater starting at the back. And I love that construction. It's just, so flowy, you know, like it's just really easy to keep knitting it. Whereas, you know, if you have traditional short rows or if you have like, you need to, I don't know, I'm just, I just find that way of constructing a sweater really, really nice and I really like it. So I cast that on this month and I will show you where I'm at. Oh, I can tell you who the designer is now. Maybe not. <laughs> it's maybe not in the instructions. It's on the first page, but I haven't printed out the first page. Um, so this is my Heli sweater. And I opted for size size four. I can't remember. I think this has quite a bit of ease though. I think it has supposed to have like maybe 25 centimeters of ease, which I'm all here for. So you cast on basically at the back here, 
do a wee section here and then you knit down a bit and then you pick up stitches for the shoulders and then you kind of do the front there like that doing some increases which I just is so lush it's really really nice to do that now I would say the neck opening looks really wide but I think once I have the stitches picked up it'll look really good so now that I've done this but basically I think I'm at pretty close to joining in the round and then I just knit the body and probably the ribbon and then I'm guessing for the sleeves I pick up the stitches for the sleeves so but isn't the colour really really nice I don't have any of the BFL Gotland in the shop at the moment but if you were very keen I could get it in in a, in a couple of months time um, I'm probably going to do an update of the hearth DK in March yeah because this month's the causeway next month is the hearth sock and the causeway and then I think in March I'll do the hearth DK so I'm just loving this um, and I love the colour like I think I love green I never used to would have said green's my favourite colour. I always like blue, but green, I'm having a green moment. So yeah, uh, this is the two skeins, what they look like. Oops, it's like gilly. So yeah, it's kind of unexpected how it knit it up. Is it, is it, I don't know. I think when you marl something, it's always a wee bit unexpected. Then I was like, I've been eyeing this sweater for a while and basically it's because uh, I know someone that used to live and work, well this guy's dad used to live and work in Donnerobin Castle and um, it's my friend's husband, his dad, he's still, I think he's still, maybe he's retired now, I'm not sure, but anyway Basically, I've seen this pattern um, and it's by Corrine Tomlinson of the Woolly Thistle and I thought this would be perfect for knitting in my Swarbles and Blue Texel which is in my shop and also at the Woolly Thistle, I think I've already said that currently. So yeah, so I held it double for the swatch, very similar. <laughs> I have a lot of this yarn, it was from one flock and I bought the whole clip. And then when it got to the mill, I just realised how much there was of it. So that's kind of crazy. So I got it. It's going to be limited edition, but it's going to be here for a while, if you know what I mean. Um, so this is... And the fabric turned out so nice when it was blocked out at this slightly looser gauge than this. I just think it's so airy and light and it's such a wearable colour. Again, would look great with this dress. And I'm getting on like a house on fire with it. No, it maybe doesn't look that exciting at the minute, but this is the front of it here. So last night, basically, <coughs> I did the neck shaving. And at some point soon, I will do the back. And then it's like a three needle bind off here. And then I think you can knit the neckline and then you pick up stitches from the arms, knit the arms and it'll be done. So this is knitted up really fast. It looks a wee touch on the small side, but I think it'll block out. It's very, very stretchy. It must be when you hold yarn double. It's very elastic out this way, but less so. Well, it is still elastic this way, but not as much, I don't think. So I think this is going to block out beautifully and give me a nice sweater with plenty of ease. I'm knitting the third size. And you know what? The way these sweaters are constructed is like night and day. They couldn't be more different. So I was delighted when I bought the pattern and seen that because they look kind of similar. They look, they do look quite similar. Like you'd look at them and think, yeah, you knit those both in pretty much the same way, but they're nothing alike, which I'm so pleased about because <laughs> you don't want to be knitting the same thing like over and over. <laughs> so 
right now I'm just taking a, a strand from the inside and a strand from the outside of my ball. So um, I think another one and a half will finish this. I think I've used two so far. So yeah, this is going to be like an iron weight gauge, probably like about 17, 16 or 17 stitches per 10 centimetres. So really enjoying this. Like I can have a batch and say it. <laughs> um, yeah, I would love to give it a wee steam block because it keeps kind of creeping up at the bottom here just to get an idea of how it will fit. But I'm really pleased with how this is going. And I'm making good use of barber cords, I have to say. I got these from So Sweet Violet. And yeah, they're good for home stitches, but this is what I realised, and I don't know why I haven't realised this before now. You see, if you have your your stitches on your barber cord and you want to put your needle back in, all you have to do is like do this, you know, put it back on and pull your needle through. You know, it's obvious when you're doing it that that's how you take stitches off the needle. So you would put it like uh, this and pull the needle through, but for some reason, I didn't think that you could do it the other way around because you're kind of pulling the barber cord against the stitches. I was like, oh, will it come off? But it didn't, it was amazing. So do try that if you have barber cords. Um, yeah, so dream projects. <clears throat> right now, I have a few things that I kind of need to knit for people, but I don't know if I'll start those any time soon i'd like to knit my little girl another jumper or maybe a vest or maybe even a dress i don't know um i did i didn't purchase yarn but i did a swap i will put a little video in here from meta for this lady called meta who we have a mutual friend she has a yarn shop in norway called garna <laughs> My Norwegian is terrible. Um, but basically we did a swap, swap of yarn through my friend and I'll put a little picture here of what I got. So I, I'm excited to have that in my stash and I don't know exactly what I'm going to make with it, but I think the navy scheme, definitely a hat and a green, a sweater. I'm thinking about a cardigan. I've seen a couple of nice ones recently, um, but I also am starting to swatch for this new yarn that I'll have coming to the shop this year. This is a very special yarn, but I will not go into it in loads of detail here now because I feel like it deserves its own episode. But basically it's a native um, Irish breed and it is spun especially for Woolly Mammoth Fibre Company and it's sport weight and yeah I'm gonna tell you all about it another time but I need to finish the swatch that's the first thing I'm knitting this swatch on 3.25 millimeter needles so and I am enjoying it so far yeah so shop stuff the causeway yarn is coming to the shop it has been a very popular yarn every time I've had it and uh, like to me it's always why it's a beautiful yarn it's um, Teesa Water and Oxford Down and it is 350 meters per 100 grams and I've knitted so many projects with it and really really enjoyed it so I've brought just a few colors to show you what's coming and I'll show you a couple of combinations all my projects are in my little buku bag, which I love. I'm using it loads at the moment. So, Cosway Yarn. Um, this is Clover Canopy. I think this is a very going to be a very it colour this year, along with um, like a lilac, which I also have in the shop, but I didn't bring up to show you. I think this would go really well with maybe this. This is Garden Wall. Possibly with this jasmine. That's quite a nice combination. I also together I like these three. This is gemstone, 
and fern and bears and marmalade aren't these three really nice together normally if when you're putting colors together if you put like complementary opposites beside each other like these two um the colors really sing and vibrate and they look really good so that's a nice little tip for choosing colors and putting colors together so if you don't know what that is maybe check out the color wheel and it's the color opposite on the color wheel that's the complementary opposite I'll also have my olive colourway, which is this, <laughs> if you also want to knit this. I don't have any natural sock to match, but you could hold, um, you could hold the Cosway double or this and like a different colour tomorrow. This is daffodil and I've actually been thinking about knitting myself a yellow sweater marled with like a darker yellow, like this is um, daffodil one and daffodil three. Imagine these held together, how fun that would be for spring, like marled. I think uh, Albina's drop would be really cool, or you could do, um, you could also do, you could do the heli sweater on this, I think, and it would look really good. It's on the website, it's a bulky weight, but I was kind of, I don't know, I was holding a DK and a four ply together and I was getting that as 14 stitches per 10 centimeter. So I was kind of getting around that gauge. Also, um, this is Alder. Uh, this is Bellini. These two would be really cool together. I dyed this one here. I should have said more about what I dyed them with, but I dyed this one with Alder Goats, which is one um, forage dye stuff that I've been experiment excuse me experiment with quite a lot this month and i intend to experiment with it more next month um the older cones are good at this time of year and they provide a really rich brownie mustardy color i would love something in this color for myself and the exhaust color is really nice i didn't did bring it up here but it's like a lighter version of this looks really good and um, I have yet to try it with uh, an iron modifier so I'm going to do that next week hopefully and next month I'm going to have a lot of this colour. I don't have much this month because it didn't dry in time but I'm going to have a lot more next month. Um, so I think it's a really nice colour and it's a really nice natural dye if you did want to try natural dye in. It's quite an easy dye to use. You just need a bit of patience. Um, simmer it a few times and it's just delightful. Honestly, it is. Sparking the joy of natural dye and to me again. Um, not that it ever left me, but you know what I mean. I love finding something like that you can experiment with and experiment a bit more with and makes it really fun. I have a very limited amount of natural sock this month. Like again, look how these naturally dye colors go together. This one is poppy and this one is earthy cinnamon. Like, does this not go so well together? And with this. Looks so good. This is jasmine and then imagine you had these four colours in the project. So nice. I have a couple of sock sets that I just made up. I had some biddies that I want to use up. So the main colours both undyed, but on the, this is berry waffle pie and the mini skein is actually speckled, although you can't really probably see in the camera, but I actually really like this one. And then I have seaweed and heather double sock set. These are both natural sock along with the last two colours. So yeah, I'm just going to show you all these colours. Look how nice that is. I'll hold them up so you can see them better and how they look against the olive. Ta-da! <laughs> so along with this stuff, I will also have a few bags from Harriet from Wildwood Stitches coming into the shop. I'll have a very minimal amount of these. But this bottom part is Harris Tweed and she sews so exquisitely everything is done to perfection and that's a little Harris Tweed label in there. I have a few of Harriet's bags and they are my most used bags 
I'm sitting here looking at this thing and maybe I should take one out for myself, but I'll be a good girl and not do that. So yeah, I think that's just about it for this month. Hope you enjoyed that. I don't think I have anything else to tell you. The shop updates tonight, 8 p.m. GMT, GMT on my website. And uh, don't, I don't think I've missed anything. Nope, I don't think so. So until next month, uh, I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>